Pulse Neutron Logging Interpretation The main objective of Pulse Neutron Logging, PNL, is the determination of formation water saturation. The principle of PNL is that chlorine has a high captured cross section compared to other relatively more abundant elements in the bulk volume. Hence, a measurement of the formation capture cross section will be directly related to the bulk volume of chlorine in the formation, which in turn is related to the water saturation because the salinity of the water results from its dissolved chlorine content. This is contingent on the water salinity not only being not known, but also sufficiently high to provide measurement resolution. This example gives an overview of the Emerald PNL module. Start Emerald and create a new document and select PNL option. A new survey is created. Load the data from the file bo6.las. This file contains the following curves gamma ray. Formation capture cross section, effective porosity, and V shell. Go to the PNL interpretation left control panel and select the information option. Accept the default and click OK. A PNL interpretation settings dialog box will pop up. At the top, a switch is offered between clean formation, no shale, Shaley, assuming a single water model, and Shaley, assuming dual water. Select Shaley, single water. Based on the selected model, the grid indicates the list of channels required to perform the interpretation. The last few rows, with the question mark icon, are for optional input. In the second column, an option invokes the average window where channels are sought within the survey up-down passes, as well as general well data. This is equivalent to the define option used in the PL interpretation settings window. The calculator option can be used within this window to initialize the various channels, for instance, using correlations. On the fourth column, the cell on each line gives the current mnemonic. The checkbox indicates whether a channel of the considered type has been defined within the interpretation. For optional channels, see the help file. The first three channels are available from the input and can be initialized using the define option. Select this option in turn and, in the subsequent window, choose the curve present and click OK. Click in column 2 and select the relevant curve for the first three parameters. This creates a copy of the channel inside the interpretation node. For sigma matrix, there is no input curve, so use the Calculate option. Click on the calculator. The table on the right in the pop-up window only indicates the possible values for different matrix types. Keep the default value of 10 and click OK. Similarly, for sigma hydrocarbon, click the Calculate button. The temperature and pressure values in the pop-up window are given only when there is no pressure temperature channel defined in the interpretation. Otherwise, the value will be read directly from those channels. Keep the default values and click on Calculate. Click OK. Similarly, for sigma water, click the Calculate button. For temperature and pressure, observe the same principle as for the hydrocarbon. Change the salinity to 100,000 ppm and validate with OK. For sigma shale, click on the Calculate button. Accept the defaults and click on OK. The boxes for the interpretation views, bulk volume analysis, BVA, and pore volume analysis, PVA, are checked by default. Click OK. 
One interpretation view is created for BVA. The PVA will be created upon the computation of the water saturation. Hide all the views except for the gamma ray and the BVA. Open the browser to check the content. All channels created appear under the interpretation input node. Zoom the depth from 4,000 to 4,900 feet. Define two P&L zones. Click on the Cross Plot button under P&L Interpretation. The Cross Plot options will depend on the interpretation model selected over the three proposed. With the single water model, cross plots can be built with or without the shell correction. At the top right of the plot, the log values and the cross plot values are displayed. When entering the dialog, those values are the same. In our example, the sigma phi cross plot seems to warrant higher sigma water and perhaps a higher sigma matrix. The local value of those parameters can be modified either by direct editing and clicking validate, or by dragging the lines on the screen or moving the line endpoints. Moving the mouse up and down will change the line intercept. Moving the mouse left and right rotates the line. Dragging the line dynamically updates the local sigma values in the plot column top right. An endpoint alone may be dragged. When dragging the line or editing values manually, only local parameters are modified. To actually change the log values requires the user to call the Modify Logs option. This will be seen later. In order to help refine the input parameters, two other cross plots can be built when the initial value of the water saturation is available, as often happens with the open hole logs. Open the file b06tl.las. Accept Define Nemos that are unknown. Define SW80 as water saturation. Skip the other columns. On import, the new curve is loaded. Go to the Information option in the PL Interpretation panel and select this curve as the input for water saturation. Click on Cross Plot and select the second option. This plot removes the influence of hydrocarbon on the data. Hence, on the cross plot, the data points should lie on a line joining sigma matrix and sigma water. This is provided SW has not changed since the first measurement, i.e., the open hole logs in our case and not true in this example. In fact, it is rarely true in most wells where pulse neutron logs are run, but here we are only trying to validate our choice of parameters. Set sigma water to 88 and click validate. Note that at this stage, the effect of the shale correction on this cross plot can be reviewed by toggling between the two options on the shale correction checkbox. Select the third cross plot. Select Frequency Plot. A grid is drawn on the plot, and a summation is made for each small square of the grid, giving the total number of points inside the corresponding square on the plot. On the Sigma matrix, V matrix cross plot, Sigma is calculated by solving the Sigma log equation in reverse, assuming again that the saturations have not changed since the initial. Hence, on the plot, the data points should funnel towards the proper value of sigma matrix for VMA equals 1. By moving the mouse cursor on the plot, check that this is around a value of 11. Modify sigma matrix and click validate. Now select the zone inputs option. These options can be used to define whole or part of a missing channel or redefine whole or a part of an existing channel.
There are three ways to define redefined channel values. Using a lateral average of some curves located inside the survey up, down passes, or general well data. Using the compute options. Using the cross plot values when applicable. This option is offered only for those parameters that are used in building the cross plots. For sigma matrix, select the cross plot option. Click on log range to redefine the whole channel and click OK. Do the same for sigma hydrocarbon and sigma water. Check after leaving the zone inputs dialog that the log values top right match the local values. Click OK to leave the cross plot dialog. Click on the saturation button in the PNL interpretation tab and click OK. The water saturation is calculated and a new view appears. The BVA view now shows the water and hydrocarbons filling the pore space in proportions corresponding to the calculated saturation. The PVA pore volume analysis view is now created and as the SWCalc option in the interpretation settings dialog was checked. The calculated water volume will appear automatically on the PVA view. The PVA and PVA automatic views display the bulk volume of water, whereas the display of the PVA view is governed by the contents of the time lapse node. The PVA view only displays the BVW curve corresponding to the saturation that has just been calculated. The time lapse option presents, in the same view, any number of successive saturation curves as new pulse neutron surveys are performed. In this example, the TDT survey just interpreted was performed in 1982. We want to compare the saturation with the original saturation computed from open hole logs run in 1980. In the browser, drop the original saturation from the down to onto the time lapse node. Close the browser and click on the time lapse icon in the control panel. This opens the dialog box in which the applicable SW curves are selected for the time lapse presentation. It is essential that the earlier SW profiles be selected first in order to respect the timing sequence. Failure to do this would result in an incorrect shading sequence for the time lapse presentation yielding an incorrect visual representation of the replacement of hydrocarbons by water. Rename it SW80. The Include SWCalc box in the interpretation settings was previously checked and although SWCalc does not appear in the time-lapse dialog nor in the time-lapse node, it will automatically show in the PVA view and will be considered as the most recent saturation. Once the dialog box is closed, the PVA view will display BVW curves corresponding to the two saturation profiles, SW80 and SW calculated. The deep blue coating represents the original water and the light blue represents the produced hydrocarbons that have been replaced by water. Green represents the hydrocarbons remaining after the 1982 TDT survey. Two more surveys, a TDT in 1990 and an RST in 1997, were performed over the interval 4,520 to 4,670 feet. Reduce the depth interval to these limits and load the SW90 and SW97 channels from the BO6TL file using the load option in the time-lapse dialog. If necessary, declare the mnemonics SW90 and SW97 in water saturation. Skip the SW80 saturation already present in the time-lapse node. The two saturations can be loaded simultaneously and will be displayed directly into the time-lapse node.
The name assigned to the loaded saturations is that originally found in the file. In order to respect the timing sequence of the surveys, SWCalc must show between the SW80 and SW90 saturations, which is not possible with the present choice of options. Go to the Interpretation Settings dialog and uncheck the Include SWCalc box. Go back to the Time Lapse dialog and click on the Browser button. That button accesses a selective data browser showing only the relevant SW curves that can be chosen for inclusion in the time lapse interpretation. Select the SW Calc saturation and click OK. Rename it SW82 and reorder the sequence correctly using the up and down buttons. On the PVA view, the display now shows the two additional saturation profiles, and incremental hydrocarbon depletion volumes are now represented by increasingly lighter shades of blue. This concludes this tutorial on pulse neutron log analysis.